It was a typical Marvel Comics action movie. The evil villain had arrived and was set out to de- and determined to destroy anyone, even any superhero that came into his path. He was ready to take over the world. And then out of nowhere, it's a bird, it's a plane, no Superman, Batman, the Avengers, Captain America, Iron Man, Catwoman, She-Ra, Wonder Woman, whatever your favorite superhero, came and appeared. Boom, wham, pow! Here's how it all played out. There always existed the goodness of our almighty God. But from that rule rose up evil forces from Satan. Satan schemed to challenge God and his goodness. He had a plan to take over the world. He was ready to crush God into mush in three methodically measured marks. Mark 1. He gathered more and more of God's messengers, the angels, and he turned them against God too. So God cast them all out of heaven and sent them into the gloomy dungeons forever, never to be able to reach heaven again. But Satan still worked on his plan on defeating the greatest and only true God. So he went to his Mark II. He roamed the earth for any susceptible subject willing to be deceived. He looked not for God, but for those who God had made in his image. In order that he could snatch them from God's image, just as he had already taken many messengers from God's goodness and presence in heaven. And behold, there before him stood such an innocent and a happy couple, ready to be victimized by the villain. Adam and Eve, the crown of God's creation, were ruling over the earth, ruling over all the plants and even all the animals, and they were all in perfect harmony with God. And in an instant, Satan set out to slaughter God's perfect plan. He deceived them to turn their backs on God and question the one command that he had given them. At that moment, sin entered the world and Satan set out to bring everything into his domain of destruction. But Satan also knew that God was not ready to give up, but rather put an end to his slithery ways. So Satan led into his third measured mark. Outwit God and his plan to send a savior. It didn't take long for God to confront Satan and remind him who had absolute control. That God was in charge and that Satan was one of his creation. But that wasn't going to stop Satan. He knew that God was going to send his son to save the world, and so Satan was going to do everything possible in his power to stop him. The devil is a murderer from the beginning. He does not stand in the truth. There is no truth in him, for he is a liar and the father of lies. So where do we fit in all of this? In the midst of all of the lies and in the midst of Satan trying to attack and outwit God lies every human being. We are part of Satan's crafty plan. He is working to deceive and to tempt us to turn towards him and to never turn towards God. And even though our lives may not seem to be any exciting part of some Marvel comic action movie, that's all part of Satan's plan too. 
He doesn't want us to notice that he is trying to turn us away from God. He wants us to think that everything is okay, that everything is normal, and everything is playing out exactly the way it should. And as we sink into comfortability, we no longer see our sins as evil, but rather as a way of life. He disguises himself as a sheep, carrying a message of hope for you, when that's just a cover-up for the wolf that he is, ready to devour your soul. And the evil villain marks his scoreboard with another hash. Watch out. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. The devil is devouring multitudes every minute. Are you one of his statistics? Looking back over 2020, I feel ashamed at the many times I turned my back on God and chose to follow the devil's craftiness in this choice or this decision or this act or another. It wasn't like those times that I gave into his temptations was necessary. It was completely the opposite. Although at each time, I sure I felt like I had received at least a little bit of satisfaction and enjoyment from committing that sin. So often in 2020, the devil deceived me and caused me to be a part of his evil team. Now it's going to be another year, 2021. Will it be any different? I'm sure most of us pray and hope so. But not if the devil has anything to do with it. He is continuously working to tempt us and to bring us to an end so that we die and join him in hell. He doesn't want to be the only prisoner there. That's the way he wins. The more he takes away from God. God knows the devil's schemes, though. And instead of three methodically measured marks, like the devil, God has one perfect plan with three precise procedures. Procedure one. Send his son to be born and live on earth. Procedure two, make sure his son will die. And procedure three, make sure that his son will rise from the dead. And Jesus, his son, would come and be more than any other superhero could ever be. But he would be the great supreme enemy crusher. He would do this in order to bring us all to glory rather than to see us bound by the bowels of the beast. To accomplish all this, he had to become like one of us. He had to be conceived, born, and suffer just as we are. The writer of the Hebrew says this, In bringing many sons to glory, it was fitting that God, for whom and through whom everything exists, should make the author of their salvation perfect through suffering. Both the one who makes men holy and those who are made holy are the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers. He says, I will declare your name to my brothers. In the presence of the congregation, I will sing your praises. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again he says, here am I and the children God has given me. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity so that by his death he might destroy him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. For surely it is not angels he helps, but Abraham's descendants. 
For this reason, he had to be made like his brothers in every way in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people because he himself suffered when he was tempted. He is able to help those who are being tempted. So as much as we have that slithery serpent trying to slice his way into our soul, that much more do we have the babe born in Bethlehem beheading the beast with one final blow. Boom, wham, pow. Thank God that this is no action movie or a dream. For this is the truth and the truth has set us free. In the middle of all of it stands Jesus Christ, humble and suffering. He appears far from any superhero that any artist has ever tried to animate. Rather, he looks like you and me and suffers the same. But this is the irony of it all. He had to go through everything that we have gone through in order to make us holy and to call us his brothers, as the writer of the Hebrews says. And the only way that he could make us his brothers was to crush the serpent and his crafty ways. Just like Genesis 3.15 proclaimed. And then he needed to take on the punishment of sin and destroy death. And he did it, did it all in three days in the most humble of ways. Jesus is more than a superhero. He is the supreme enemy crusher. Today, Satan still fights for control. Tomorrow, Satan may try to gain someone else's soul. But in all things, Jesus is able to help those who are being tempted. Why? Because he himself suffered when he was tempted. I do not share these things with you today to look at God as a superhero. Rather, the importance of the section from the Hebrews is to emphasize the two powers. The powers of evil and the powers of God. And there's only one that ever wins. And that's the power of God. In our verses of Hebrews chapter 2, we see both the evils of power and the powers of God laid out in flying colors just like any Marvel action comic movie. And just like any of those movies, we have the end result of the good reigning supreme. And the only good to reign supreme is Jesus Christ, the enemy crusher. He has swallowed up death through the cross. He has removed the slithery serpent's tongue so that we are free from any accusations that he brings up. And he has paid for all of our sins by suffering under the punishment we deserve, solidifying it all to be true through his resurrection from the dead. Are you not glad to be brothers with the Lord? He has made us children of his own father. He continues to fight the deceptions of the devil. And 2020 will be no different. The devil may try new ways and new things to sway you from your savior. He will be craftier than ever before. But none of his craftiness None of his deceiving ways will be able to separate you from the love of your Savior because he has crushed the serpent forever. Behold your Savior in the manger who have saved you from eternal danger. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. The Lord be with you. Amen.